kids. Warren Luff, one of the biggest kids here this weekend, is alongside me for the first of the youth race. Really looking forward to this one. Yeah, look, this is going to be a cracker. If, uh, if qualifying is anything to go by, we saw really competitive times out there. It was only sort of split by sort of a couple of tenths over the sort of top five. All right, well, Mason Barbera got his first ever pole and Kylie caught up with him after that. He's been on the front row of the grid four times in his young career, but Mason Barbera, you finally got pole. What a great place to start this race. Yeah, we're excellent. You know, we're 100% stoked. You know, I couldn't be more thankful to the team. You know, as you said, we've been on the front row plenty of times this year, but we just we couldn't get that uh, pole position. We finally got it and pushed it to the absolute maximum then, but uh, you know, the car's on fire and you know, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the team behind me. So. And what a place to do it too, because I know here last year there were a few issues. Talk <laughs> us through them. Oh, look, yeah, last year was a tough, tough place for me. Uh, we had a lot of issues with the brake fade here, um, probably because I was so so green in the category that I wasn't really used to the brake fade. Uh, but this year, you know, we came into this round, you know, really quite nervous, um, but we kind of got on top of it, and you know, obviously it's working. And you've got a lot to prove. You want to show that you that you can race and race hard and fair. 100. percent You know, we're out there. We're out there to race for a championship. You know, we're on pole, but we're just going to stay as calm as we can and do what we have to do. And if we finish pole, awesome. If we have to, you know, lose a few spots, hope not. Um, you know, to keep that championship contention in place, then we'll do what we have to do. So the Utes head out for their first race of the weekend here in the Reed Park Circuit. Townsville is where it's at, and they've become something of a regular. Uh, feature on the schedule here in North Queensland. Mason Barbera, the teenager from Bundaberg. I guess this is as close as he'll get to a home race and he has pole position for the first time ever for IOR Petroleum. He's also rocking a breast cancer aware livery this weekend, so great to see from the young man. Kim Jane has been very fast this year. He starts alongside him. David Cedars right behind them, the championship leader, alongside Craig Dontis. Jeremy Gray was uh, disappointed not to make it through to the final 10. Matthew Nolan Warren, we saw him pretty fired up in qualifying earlier with that sticky throttle. And Roel Harris, uh, you got to the bottom of that problem, I do believe. Yeah, I caught up with Ryle after qualifying. He thinks it was a fuel pump issue, so he said they're on top of it. And uh, he said it was actually good fun to be out there and not having to worry about a championship. And he's actually really looking forward to the races this weekend because there's Obviously, he's missed a few races this year, so there's no pressure of the championship. He's just out there to, to race. He wants to get his way to the front. And as we've seen in the past, those lights go green. Ryle Harris is a mean racer out there. So he will have his head down, eyes forward. Matty Nolan, one of our onboards to watch out for after what was uh, disappointing qualifying for him. It's a scary prospect having a hung throttle. Just wide open it was. And he did a good job not to destroy the car and bring it back. Craig yeah. Dontis, another one of our onboards to watch out for. I think uh, he was more, a, more, more at risk of doing damage in the car on the way back, <laughs> smashing the steering wheel and wipers going everywhere. Yeah, he was fired up. Yeah. Was young Matty Nolan, the uh, Gold Coast-based driver, former hockey player off the back of the grid here. Barbera on pole. Has a race win to his credit at Phillip Island. That was reverse grid. I've been a believer of his for a while now that he's got good car speed. But he and Jane have history. They were into each other in uh, Simmons Plains. There was some contact between them also at Phillip Island. They definitely have a bit of history, these two. And they're starting again on the front row, just like they did at Winton, but in different positions this time around. And the start is going to be so critical here. It's such a long run from the start line all the way down there to turn two. So whoever gets the jump here off the start, you've got to sort of assume that they're going to have the upper hand going down there in turn two. But as we've seen in the past, look for someone to go and take a move down the inside. Hopefully everyone can get through there cleanly. But uh, yeah, turn two here always throws up a few surprises. The reigning Sandown 500 champion will start off the inside of the third row. That's Steve Owen. Again, we'll see him on the grid at Sandown and Bathurst as the green flag waves to the back. We're ready to go in the Australian V8 Ute Racing Series. Warren Luff's pinned up against the window, excited to see the start of this one. Barbera, does he get the start? No, give it to Kim Jane, I reckon, Warren. Yeah, Kim definitely got the better start there. He probably in reaction time was better to the light there. We see in the background there, three wide down here through the first little kink there. And then this is where it can sometimes get all unstuck. Everyone tries to sort of clamber to that inside. <laughs> defensive, defensive. Well, the Harris coming across to the inside back there. Squeezing down the inside of uh, Andrew Fisher there. Hey, what, Mason Barbera saw everyone's on the defensive, so he just hung it high around the top and it nearly paid off. But he can't quite cover Cedars, or he might have got second back. Oh, a couple running wide down there into the runoff. Steve Owens lost a few spots at the start, and it was Andrew Fisher. Finds reverse and gets out of there, but a good effort. Mason Barbera saw what was going on down at turn two and just drove straight around the outside of them. 
Look, it's a great ploy here because everyone tries to dive to that inside. Everyone tra tends to sort of check up a little bit early, and it's a great, great way to sort of uh, make up a few spots there. And that was really smart driving by him. Just a teenager off the back of a little bit of time in the naughty corner after a couple of accidents last year. Returning the best way he possibly could by putting the thing on pole here today. A race win earlier. Uh oh, Harris with a big lock up, and he does a really good job at missing Jared McLeod. Jared flicks up a cloud of dust. I don't know if he was so confident in the car that he was going to make it, but <laughs> good bit of defensive driving there also by Jared McLeod to actually see him coming there as well, because so often we see people have a dive down the inside, the car in front doesn't see them there and turns straight across the nose of them, and it is something that we see quite a bit here at the, at the tight and twisty layout here at Tansville, both at that corner and also the last corner. Listen to the speed of Craig Dontis. You can hear the wind at over 200 k's an hour, and he throws it on down at turn two. He's sitting in P4 with Brian Hansford tucked in behind him, and Barbera is closing just a little bit onto the back of Kim Jane's Commodore. It's always easy when you're the car behind and you've got someone to be able to sort of chase. Kim Jane, unfortunately, the, being the lead vehicle, he's out there trying to sort of set the pace. So when you're that car behind, it's always that tendency, you watch the car in front, where they break, you go that little bit deeper. It gives you that sort of carrot and that incentive to be able to sort of push that little bit harder. And obviously with Kim being out front there, he doesn't want to make a mistake and throw away the early lead that he does actually have. Ryle Harris getting all loose and out of shape there, coming out of the uh, exit of turn six there. The cloud under pressure. First grid race winner earlier this year. Oh, and now he's just done enough to get to the inside. The pressure finally paying off, and Steve Owen should be able to follow Harris through here. There's a few of them ganging up. Jeremy Gray, that's going to be tight. And also, oh no, who was that? Was that Harris who just pulled on to the inside? It is. I'm thinking those electrical gremlins from qualifying have come back to haunt them again, so he will be devastated. No. That, uh, that, yeah, that problem is obviously returning. Oh, what a shame. He's got easily the fastest dude here this weekend, but Gremlins are putting pay to it. Then he pulls to the inside of the track. He's done a good job to get that out of the way. It's clearly lost all power. Otherwise, he would have at least tried to make it back to the lane. Let's follow this action again down here. The tight right-hander. So it's just at the top of the frame right there at the exit of the corner. He just pulls it straight over the right. Great awareness for a guy that's lost all power to get the clutch in and get it pulled over. And he's trying to limp back to the pits here, Warren. It must be such a helpless feeling. It is, but he's certainly far enough off the racing line there. We shouldn't really see a, a safety car for that. And that's a great thing, someone of Ryle's experience. He knows that he's obviously got the problem out there. Get the thing offline. He wants to be able to see these guys go racing. Whilst his race might be over, he still wants to see these guys out there sort of uh, going at it. Mason Barbera <coughs> putting the pressure back on here. Had to make that move stick on Cedars in that opening lap to have a shot at maybe going for the lead. It's not usually a, a traditional overtaking spot that we see down there into the turn seven and eight, but what he's trying to do there is he's trying to get Kim Jane to turn in early, which tightens up the exit of turn eight, gives him a slow run down here, and that's how you start having a look down the inside at turn 11. There hasn't worked for him this time, but what he's trying to do is he's trying to make it known to Kim Jane that he's there. It's about moving your car around. Whilst you might not be looking to sort of put a move on, get the guy in front looking in his mirrors, hopefully get him to drive into a mistake. It makes your day a lot easier board here with Benny Nolan, the man they call Wyatt, and uh, he is going around that last hairpin bend. Raul Harris is doing the old sprint back towards the pits. That's how they start the uh, Highlands 101, with a nice big sprint like that. I somehow doubt that uh, Ryle was a participant in the Gold Coast Marathon last week, so maybe <laughs> he's getting some early training in for next year. <laughs> Kim Jane hanging on to this lead here. But it's fair to say, he probably doesn't have the fastest car in this lead pack. Mason Barbera with the fastest car out there on the racetrack. He's got the fastest lap of the race. And at the end of three laps, it's Kim Jane out front in the first race of the Utes. Get the feeling this is building, building to something big. The longer Kim Jane hangs on to the lead, the more the pressure will mount. The hungrier Mason Barbera will get. Remember, he is young, he's aggressive. He wants to impress all of his uh, Queensland family and friends. And he won't settle for second position this race. But he knows he needs to make it clean as he gets very close to the bumper down there. This Troy Dontis started at the back of the grid. Oh, yeah, with a big old slide through the middle of the corner. A bit too hot under brakes, a bit too fast on entry. Quick little rotation. All part of the fun. 
Like you said here with uh, Mason Barbera, though, he clearly has the fastest car out there. They've still got seven laps to go, but it's up to the team now to sort of get on the radio and just calm him down a little bit. He just needs to keep the pressure on Kim Jane. He doesn't need to do anything silly. They've got the speed over the cars behind them. He just needs to keep working away. He doesn't need to throw this away. Kim Jane was really looking down at something in the car then, going the straight line. Really looking down towards maybe where the belts are. There's not a lot down there. There's literally the bottom of the steering wheel no. and your lap. So I'm not too sure what he was trying to see down on the front straight then. But I wonder if that's why he's not got a huge amount of speed at the moment. He, he may also potentially have a, uh, a drink straw in the car, which sometimes when it sort of uh, pops out from your helmet or something, you can find yourself searching around for it. And on a circuit like this, where it is quite busy around this back section, the only place that you can really do that is down the front straight. That would make sense. He is seriously under fire here, Kim Jane. Last lap through, Steve Owen, fastest man on the circuit. It's a shame he got such a bad start, but he's clawed his way back to seventh. Nathan pretty ahead of him. <coughs> David Cedars, who's leading the championship in third, is going to uh, open up that championship lead once more. Kim Jane is just under fire here. The problem for Mason is Kim's a bit of a wily old fox there. Where he needs <laughs> to be fast, he definitely is. Like on the run down to turn 11, so on the exit of 8 and 9, Kim's really good at straightening the car up and getting good drive and not being sort of, uh, not being too out of shape. Same onto the front straight See, here. He just keeps looking down. Yeah. Doing it again there. Maybe it's all part of his uh, ritual, just trying to ignore the mirror, maybe. It's funny when you watch the onboard of some people in the car. As you said, some people have these like strange little rituals that they do when they're going <laughs> down the straight or something like that, whether it be relaxing their hands on the wheel or something like that. So, look, it could be something as simple as that. Hopefully, it's nothing that's uh, going to sort of uh, cause an issue for him later on in the race, though. His Domptus goes back down in second gear for turn three. Should just get a bit of that inside kerb and let it go out to the wall. So Aaron Russell in the fence there in uh, qualifying. Up and over the top. There's a little rise there, a little change of elevation before you go through five and six. Oh, an understeer bad through six. That's been doing that for him all weekend. Just as he's starting to get the power back on, you've not got the advantage of the brake pedal helping you get more bite on the front tyres. It's funny because everyone looks at the utes and, and think that they must be very light in the rear and very oversteering and everything like that. But as a car to race, they're actually probably more of an understeer bias, meaning that you're struggling for the grip at the front. And like what you just saw there with the onboard with the Craig Dontis coming out of turn six, it's really sort of trying to sort of push the front of the nose of the car across the track there. And that's the general characteristic of these utes. Yes, they are light in the front. You've got to remember they've got that big V8 engine up front. You've got a lot of weight over the front axle there. So generally, you struggle with understeer more than you do with oversteer in these cars. Late in the race, if you've been a little bit heavy foot on, on, the, uh, on the right foot, sure, you can end up with a bit of oversteer, but understeer's the main thing. OK, let's take a replay. Oh, Nathan Pretty, don't touch that wall, Nathan. Oh, yeah. And that, that's exactly what we were talking about before. Mid to exit understeer, he's carried the speed through, just has run out of road, and you can see it's the grip at the front of the car that he's running, running out of, not for rear. He's got to be careful with that. He needs as many championship points as possible. He's having an unbelievable season. Been top 10 every race, Nathan Pretty, and been just about on the podium with every uh, round as well. So this is the battle at the front. Jane and Barbera swapping lap times. And there's barely been a few feet in this entire journey for them. Barbera pouring on the pressure, but him just so good at getting in and out of the uh, corners that he needs to be fast in, like Warren was alluding to earlier. It's always the, the last corner before a straight or a passing opportunity, but he got the left rear up on the dirt that time. This could be the moment. Barbera, could this be the chance? He has a crack. Warren, there's a change for the lead if he can stop it. Can he hold it there? Kim Jane back to the inside. Now oh. it's about can he hold the outside through here? He's got the overlap, but no, he's just cooked it a little bit on the way in at 11. Good racing. <coughs> and at the last corner, he'll push and push. He'll huff and puff, but Kim Jane will not get out of the way. Good racing so far as they tick over to start another lap. Kim Jane is hanging on to this pressure. What a race at the front. Jane versus Barbera. Barbera's going to get very close to the back of Jane under brakes down at turn two. This battle has been going on and Barbera pouring on the pressure, tries to will Kim Jane wide to get an inside run before turn three. Nothing doing there. You can definitely see he's getting frustrated now. He knew that he had a great chance there. He got down the inside at 11, but got in there a little bit too hot. 
think we've got a replay here. He flicks out, but he just comes in that little bit too hot, runs it wide, and Kim oh. has seen this all before, does the cutback. He knows then he's got the inside running through here. A little bit of contact, there's nothing in that. And, uh, yeah. He needed to clear that line, didn't he? Because if he gave racing room through that second last corner, Barbera could have been up the inside for the last corner. Clever old Wiley Racing from one of the best, but he's got a little bit of overlap here across the train tracks. Again, Jane out in the dust. Side by side, this could be the time for Mason to make it stick. Jane says, the door is open, son, if you want to walk through it. He'll try the switch back again, but Barbera gets it stopped this time. Not to be out thought twice. Change for the lead this time for good, unless Jane can pounce the last corner. No, Barbera is just putting that in an awkward spot to hang on to the lead. It's the lead that he deserves right now. Good racing at the front. That was a great move. He wasn't going to make that same mistake again two laps in a row. <laughs> he saw Kim get wide coming out of the exit of turn eight. He knew he had the run on him, so he didn't have to panic on this occasion. I think probably on the, on the previous lap, he wasn't expecting it, and he got in there a little bit hot. Now the big question is, can Kim Jane hang on to second? Because he's got Dave Cedars behind him, and Ooh. David Cedars is also a man on a move. Mason Barbera is just a little bit nervous about being in the lead there. It was very sure to cover off the inside line, but made the decision to do that very late. And as a result, Kim's got good exit speed through two and can't get to the inside at turn three. And this is the part of the track where I reckon Mason Barbera is a little bit quicker across the curb through the change of direction through this one. This is turns five and six. He just really needs to focus on putting together a good couple of clean laps now and break that gap between them. You can see through there, like you said, he's really fast through that section. He's already stretched that gap out to nearly a car length through there. He just needs to sort of string a couple of laps together, get away from Kim Jane, let Kim worry about having a battle with Dave Cedars. And you can see Kim struggling again with drive on the exit there. He just worked it, didn't he? Worked it so well, Yokohama replay. Learned from his mistake the first time. Just wash up a little bit more car speed and make sure that there was no way Kim could get back to the inside. Good racing. Dave Cedars was hoping to get in on that action. and uh, But yeah, Mason did a great job there. He, he left the turn in just that little bit later so that Kim really had no option but to sort of hang wide and try and sort of tuck in behind. Dave Cedars was keen to try and get down there, but just not quite close enough. On board here, Craig Dontis, CRC Racing, as he wiped his brow. It's hot, thirsty work out there today. Two to go on what has been a safety car free race. We've got a pink and black car running in the supercars in the hands of Fabian Coulthard. The pink and black car leading here with Mason Barbera from Bundaberg. Teenager. Probably the youngest and the oldest at the front of the field here. <laughs> I don't think Kim, Kim Jane will be too appreciative of that. <laughs> I say that lovingly. <laughs> experience. Let's go with the youngest yeah. and most experienced. No, I think that's much better. Yeah. He is a very talented race car driver, Kim Jane. 200 plus starts in this category is Matty Nolan. Gives uh, Nandy Kiss a bit of a hurry up there. Haven't seen too much of Nandy Kiss today. We've been having a pretty nasty Dunlop Series crash here at Turn 6 a couple years ago. But uh, here he is in the Utes. Cedars now. Can he try the same move? Put the pressure on through Turn 8. And if they run wide through Turn 9, you can pounce at 11. You've got to plan these moves back a few corners. Kim certainly tidied up the exit of Turn 8 on that time. And... Uh, what he was doing previous to that was he was really hitting that inside curb. Dave having a little bit of a look down the inside, but again, not quite close enough, but trying to get Kim. He's actually run a little bit wide there, but not quite close enough. But yeah, Kim was sort of hitting that inside curb at eight, which was upsetting him getting back to the throttle, and that's what hurt him. I think he's definitely learnt by that mistake, because that lap was a lot cleaner, taking away that potential advantage that uh, Dave Cedars had. Yeah, Jared McLeod pouring the pressure onto Steve Owen here. Making uh, Steve-O's life a little bit miserable. Last lap, uh, race two, it'll be reverse grid. But the beauty is, Warren, we don't know what that reverse number is going to be. So just fight for every position because that could be the one that gets you pole for race two. Well, ultimately, it's all about championship points as well. Finish higher up, you get more points. And that's the whole secret to you racing and being able to win championships, oh. as Royal Harris has done so well. Bit loose on the exit there from Kim Jane. I don't think Dave will be out. He'll have a bit of a look, but uh, yeah, not quite close enough. Kim was very sideways through turn two. Great to have uh, the thoughts of Warren Luff here today, a two-time champion in this category. The man in the box seat, I think he could potentially be Craig Dontis because he's got nothing to lose here. These two guys are fighting in front of him. He's praying that Dave Cedars will throw it down <laughs> the inside and maybe there'll be a little bit of a contact and he'll be there He'll be there to sort of clean up the pieces. The beneficiary, as it would be, has changed. If it's going to happen, it's going to be down here at turn 11. Here we go, Cedars. You can smell blood a little bit in the water here. Look at the way the rear end just swings out. He's got to have a look. No, Kim wants to cover. 
And Cedars will just go to the high side. Kim should be able to run him out of road. And that puts Paige to the battle for second. Doncis, we go on board with him. Can he sneak a last minute move from the last corner? Doesn't look to be the way. It's going to be a Queenslander. A northern Queenslander up in North Queensland. Mason Barbera with two hands giving himself a round of applause. That's how you do it. And the young man who graduated from karting takes his second victory. It's Jeremy Gray is just going to drift his way to the finish. He'd get a job in the Hot Wheels stunt. Same with you doing that. That was not a bad <laughs> bit of car control in the background. But congratulations, Mason Barbera. You can see the helmet. It's got like a really cool wood grain finish on it. That is class right there from the young 18-year-old. And uh, with the breast cancer aware livery this weekend, he has taken only his second victory in this category, but that's the first one that uh, has been a genuine race win, not using the reverse grid regulations to his advantage. <laughs> I think the uh, Hell family can enjoy that one. And he, oh, it's good. Get have a word to Mason. Can you hear me? It's mum. <laughs> that's great. That's a really nice moment. That's the great thing about ute racing. It's a very much family orientated sport, and, uh, and it's great to see things like that. Full credit to Mason and his uh, his family there. Well deserved victory. By just 1.9 seconds, he gets home ahead of uh, David Cedars, who extend the championship lead. And the second race for the Utes is bound to be very exciting. So Barbera clearly home for first. Fisher fought all the way back to 11th after that moment. On the opening lap of the race, Troy Dont has had his issues and a DNF for Royal Harris, which means he'll have to start last, I guess. Yeah, because obviously not being a finisher, he'll uh, he'll definitely be off the back of the grid for the next one. So look out for uh, Royal starting off the back. He'll be a, definitely a man on a mission. But full credit here to Mason Barbera. He's definitely soaking this up, <laughs> loving being able to sort of uh, do it in front of the home crowd.